MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news via video media. Richard, we've got the Akuma, uh, this is the U3000 machine, this is the Moltas machine, is it a new model? Uh, this, this U series is a, quite a new model, before this was a B series uh, machine with various different sizes and ranges, but this U series now is our new range, so we've got the U3000 and the U4000. Okay, I know there's lots of mill-turn machines on the market, so I want to quickly get into some of the things that are different about the Akuma, that Akuma offer that maybe some others don't. Can, can you tell us some of those things? Yeah, really, it's, it's more the collection of different technology we've got on board the machine itself. So the things like the collision avoidance system, the way that this is managed on the machine is completely different to what anyone else can offer. Um, Five-axis auto-tuning, so if you're doing five-axis work, you can auto-tune any slight geometric inaccuracies you've got in the machine on the control itself. Let's go back to the collision avoidance first because there are, so you could buy software externally from a third party on mill turn machines to do collision avoidance, but you're saying with the Akuma you've got it inbuilt? That's correct, yeah, so it's on board the machine and the beauty of that is, is the models themselves are actually designed and made by Akuma, specific to the machine that's being delivered to that customer. So if there is a slight variant change in the machine itself due to the specification, that change will be uh, visual in the model itself so that is there as a collision detection zone. And the collision avoidance okay that the, the clues in the name but does it really mean that whatever part you put in here you're not going to have a smash you're not going to you're not going to potentially scrap the component? It obviously does mean that but there is still that human error someone could physically put a completely different component in the chuck let's say it's the same diameter they could put it in the chuck it would be a different component but in theory this is as best as you get at the moment on the market. And then you started on to another point about five axis? Yeah, five axis auto tuning. So this is a, an onboard system. So you will have geometric errors in your machine that stack up over time. So every axis has got its own uh, geometric tolerance. Over time, these will change due to your floor, certain different things. So when it's shipped from Japan, it arrives here, at the customer's premises. Once you check that machine, then there's some slight different geometric uh, differences from when it was in Japan. This five axis auto tuning can then fine tune this system and bring it all back in line so it's a very accurate machine. And how often will it do that? Do you have to ask the machine to do that or does it do it by its natural? Yeah, you ask the machine to do that. It's a very simple, very easy walkthrough procedure. It's on the screen giving you um, pointers on how to walk through this system. And what that does then sets these uh, um, geometric tolerances. The beauty of this one though is what no one else can do is because it's on board, it's not just setting the kinematics of the machine, it's also setting the straightness errors of the machine. So it finds an axis that's not quite straight. What it'll do is it'll put a calculation into the control. So as it's moving live, you've told it to move in one axis, but the machine will actually be moving in multiple axes to take out any straightness inaccuracies of the machine. Okay, and, and how important is this to have that sort of feature on a machine? Um, if you're doing highly accurate five axis work, it's very important. If you're doing just basic, you know, prismatic parts that don't require much accuracy, then you don't need this. this. And, and is it standard on this, this, this range? It is an option on this range of machines. Okay, and tell me about some of the other points. Um, some of the other points, uh, the thermo-friendly concept. So this is um, on, on the machine on all of our Akuma range. This takes into account any changes in temperature in your working environment. So for instance, we bring this machine in in the morning on a Monday morning. It's fairly cold, it's been cold over the weekend, the machine's not been run. There's going to be a change throughout the day as you're running that machine. And let's say you take a delivery next to a, your machine's next to a roller shutter door, that door opens, cold air rushes in, your machine will change. What Akuma do, they design the machine in such a way that it'll expand and contract in a linear motion. So as there is a change in your temperature in your working environment, the machine will grow and shrink in a uniform manner because they've designed it in such a way that it's rectangular carriageways. There's no tipping and rocking of the machine. What they then do is they create a calculation inside the control. This calculation is done from Akuma, they put it in a temperature control environment, raise and lower the temperature. They then put this mapping into the machine itself. Um, the machine then is constantly moving. You won't physically see it, you won't see your figures changing. There is a page that will show you the actual movements of this. So it's minutely moving down to 0.1 of a micron all times. So for the engineer then, regardless of environmental or external factors, they're going to maintain the same accuracies throughout? That is the intention, yes. Okay, another, another point, turn cut, tell me about that. Yeah, turn cut, this is a new feature now to this multi-shoe series. This originally started out in our machining centre range, our horizontal machining centre, 
but we have our normal turning axis of the machine. Um, but what we can now do is we can actually use the turn cut function to turn features around a component, not just on the turning spindle. This is done by interpolating the axis of the machine. So the physical head of the machine will interpolate the axis at the same time as keeping the cutting tool of a turning tool in the correct position for turning a component. And this can change multiple shapes. So instead of just using a boring head and doing single bores, we can generate profiled turn shapes around the part. And in your opinion, how many applications would, would benefit from this feature? Quite a few. We've, came up, we've come across this quite a few times. Knowing our turn cut functionality on the horizontal machining centre, we know that those parts sometimes require turning on a normal machine also. So now we've got the beauty of having both of these functionalities on one machine. So you mentioned four very important points. Are they, are they pretty unique to Akuma? Yeah, they're quite unique, quite, quite sort of outstanding sort of points really. They sort of stand at the top of most of the points. There is obviously many, many points on this machine, you know, lots of technology on this machine. It hit me with some more quickly. Um, the OSP suite, okay, it's again, it's across a range of the machines, but this is a new part of the control itself. So on the control, it's got a user interface. It's quite easy to use for most operators. It brings forward application-based um, icons on there. So you can pop up a technical calculator. You can start to load on third-party bits of software and have that easy accessible in an application form. There's a lot of quick and quirky things to pick up from this OSP suite. What about, what about the hardware? I mean, let's look at this machine. Expandable tool changes, uh, you know, how, how, that's a B-axis head. How far does it tip? Sub spindles, turrets, tell me about those. Yeah, okay, so starting off with the tool change, then we can have a 40, 80, or a 120 as standard. Um, they are now looking at doing the 181 um, matrix magazine and an over 200 as well matrix magazine. And what tools would you be using? On this type of machine, it's either HSK 63 or Capto C6. Okay, and then the bottom turret here, is that, is that, do you have to have that? Is it, I mean, what's the, what's the benefit to having that bottom turret? No, I mean, this, this is, this is a, an option really for this machine. You can have it as a, a twin saddle machine or a single saddle machine. So the upper turret will always be a B-axis type turret. The lower turret will always be the castellated style turret. Um, the benefits really is obviously productivity. You're, if you want to try and work on one, one spindle with one turret, you can work on the other spindle with the other turret. Or you can work on the same spindle at the same time with, the same, with both turrets. So could you dual turn? Could you be turning to remove more metal? Could you dual turn? Yes, that is correct. Even though these are not directly opposed as an angular turret, they can still possible to do dual turn on this machine. And what speed would your milling head run at? These run at 10,000 RPM. Okay, so pr pretty quick. Now, do you know the capacity, it don't, you don't have to be exact, but roughly of this machine, what are we is that a 12-inch chuck on there? Yeah, this is a 12-inch chuck, and on the U3000 in particular, we have two different bed lengths. So we've got a one-meter bed length or a one-and-a-half-meter bed length. Um, the y-axis stroke on this is 250 millimetres, and you can swing a 650 diameter part. Now, one of the things that we've, we've been looking at today is the Akuma build quality, premium machine style versus affordability. Are we talking about those things with this machine as well? Are we at the upper echelons when it comes to the, the structure, the rigidity, as well as it being affordable to the majority of our viewers? We are at the higher end of the technology, that is for sure. On the cost side of things, the entry level side of things, no, this machine is more about high end, high tech. You know, it's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of functionality on this machine as opposed to some of our other entry level machines. I think it's the old adage really, when you look at the cost of a machine, you should look at what it does. And you've mentioned a few features that will improve quality of component, will mean you can machine more complex parts more productively uh, and make you more efficient. Would that be right? Yeah, I'd say that's correct really. I mean, this is, as you say, it's gonna be a more efficient machine but you have got that technology that's going to make you stand out a little bit more from some of the others. And you, t you spoke about thermal growth. What about linear scales, again, to maintain those levels of ac accuracy? Are they, are they a standard on this machine or an option as well? It is an option on this machine. It's not a standard feature. It's something we always say with Abso scales, they're, they're not needed for the time now. If you had them on a brand new, new build machine, the machine will be the same with or without the Abso scales. It's over time as the machine starts to bed in, certain things will slightly change over time. So this is where the upset scales will come into play. And this particular model, we see we've got two spindles and we've got a turret, but you could just buy this with a, a main spindle and a B-axis head. That's correct, yeah. You can have it without a tail stock, you can have it with a tail stock, you can have it with a subspindle, without a subspindle, you can have it with a lower turret or without a lower turret. So there's many, many different combinations of this machine. And what I like is this is in stock as well, isn't it? That's correct. It's in our showroom in Coventry.